Hi everyone, my name is Moni. And I'm Naveen from Before You Play. And today, in celebration of the newest Kickstarter, we are going to be doing a playthrough of Everdell. Yeah, so we never played this on our channel before, so we are going to do it today. This is designed by James A. Wilson and published by Starling Games. Uh, we have some of the components for the expansions, and so we're going to go over that today and do a full playthrough. Yeah, and so if you're not familiar with the expansions that we're discussing, there's Pearl Brook, there's uh, Belfair, I believe that's what it's called. Belfair, yes. There are a few other uh, smaller expansions, and then now they are releasing the final two that is part of the entire collection. Yes. And they are called New Leaf and Mistwood. And while we don't have all of the details surrounding these expansions, we were sent a kind of like a taster pack of some of the critters and constructions mm -hmm. that are going to be in the new expansions. Right. And so today we're going to do a full playthrough featuring as many of those cards as possible. Now, if you are interested in what is to come in these two expansions, we will leave a link in the description below. The Kickstarter is active and it is funded, so you can check it out there. Now, before we get started, if you can all do us a big favor and turn on your Klingon subtitles, just in case we make any rules mistakes, we can make those corrections there. We're going to do what we can to make sure that doesn't happen. Sometimes it happens. Uh, but if you want to see more videos like this in the future, please consider subscribing. And with that, we are going to get started. So please direct your attention to the center of the table. We are all set up here for a two-player game of Everdell. And so if you've never played Everdell before, there's usually this large wooden tree that sits over here that holds like our next season pawns and some of the events. We're not going to be playing with it today because of the difficulty in uh, the top-down camera. Yeah. Now what we have in front of us is the technically the collector's edition of the base game. We're not going to be playing with any of the other mini expansions like the Legends expansion or the extra extra but we are going to be using the gold coins which does not come with the base game so just so you know as well as some of the new expansion cards which we will discuss in a second but first if you've never played Everdell before the theme of this game is Everdell is actually the name of a place it's a place where a lot of uh, critters from all different types of walks of life I uh -huh, guess yeah. live harmoniously together and so us as players we're going to be going through all four seasons the game starts towards the end of the winter season and we're going to be progressing through the seasons, building buildings into our tableau, uh, collecting critters who are going to be a part of our communities, and trying to score the most points by synergizing these cards. I believe, yeah, within this region that is Everdell, we're trying to build a city. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to have our own tableau of cards. Monique will have hers. This is not a co-op game. This is a fully <laughs> competitive game. And we're going for it. And at the end of four rounds, aka seasons, whoever has the most points wins. Mm -hmm. So we're going to first start with a general overview of how the game is played. It is actually a really straightforward, easy to learn game, mm -hmm. so it shouldn't take too long. But just so you know, at the start of the game, we start with eight cards here in the middle of the board. And this is considered the meadow. meadow. Each player also has a hand of cards to start the game. But as the game progresses, we're going to have the ability to build cards both from our hand and from this meadow. Mm -hmm. In addition to the meadow, around the board, we also have worker placement spots. There are two main areas where you're going to be placing your workers. There are the basic locations that kind of follows this snake-like path, as well as the forest locations that are over on the sides of the board. Because we're playing a two-player game, we only use three of them, but typically there's, I believe, four. Four, yep, in mm -hmm. higher player counts. And so the main difference between these spots, some of the basic locations are inclusive, meaning several people can go to that spot, including yourself. You can go there multiple times. And they are mainly these the circles that are not closed. See, there's a difference between these open ones and these closed ones. All of the forest locations are going to have closed circles, just like in these areas. And those spots, only one player can go there. The cards have two spots, but the second spot is for a four-player game. And so on your turn, you're going to be doing one of two main things. You're either going to be placing one of your workers out onto these worker placement spots to gain resources, or you're going to be playing a card either from the meadow or from your hand. Mm -hmm. If ever you can't do either of these things, then you must pass and prepare for the next season, which we'll talk about in a second. Mm -hmm. So first things first, at the start of the game, each player starts with two of their workers. You're going to have a maximum of six workers, but you're going to gain them as you progress throughout the game. Yeah. As soon as I pass and move on to the next season, then I'm going to claim my next worker. I get my sixth worker the last time I pass, essentially. Mm -hmm. Yeah, your fifth and your sixth in the very end. Mm -hmm. And so placing your worker out onto the board mainly gets you resources. And resources are in the form of these four materials. We have berries, pebbles, resin, and twigs. I also want to add that there are some other spots that you can place your workers, including these events which will just get you a certain amount of points, uh, specifically three points, at the end of the game if you have whatever the requirement is. So here you have to have four of that type of symbol in your tableau on your cards in order to score that many points. And when you take that action and place your worker there, it's exclusive to you. So you'll physically take the tile and keep it for yourself. Yes, these are closed circles. The other type of events are these cards, and these change from game to game. We're going to be playing with some of the expansion cards, which we'll talk about uh, before we start our playthrough. 
but this is the same concept. These are uh, specific to only one player. Only one player can take them, and they'll usually tell you a requirement. In the base game, some of the requirements are a little bit more specific, like this card requires you to have the Cemetery and the Shepherd, which are very specific cards that are in this deck. In the expansions, they're a little bit more generic. They only require you to have a certain combination of symbols showing on your cards. So that we will discuss during our playthrough. Yeah, typically these cards aren't here. They're on that big tree that we mentioned earlier. So in this playthrough, they're just going to be hanging out where they are. Yes. And so the other option you can do on your turn, if you don't want to place a worker out onto the board, or if you can't, is you can play a card. And so the way that that works is all the same across the board. These cards show you a number of different things, and they're all the same across the board. The number on the right hand side here in the yellow circle is how many points the card's going to be worth at the very end of the game if it's in your city. The symbol on the left hand side here tells you what type of card it is. So all of the cards that have this leaf symbol on it are considered production mm -hmm. cards. And so when you place this card into your tableau, you will immediately get whatever the benefit is on the card. And every single time you change seasons, it'll activate again, with the exception of the second season, I believe. In the summer. Yep. In the summer. And so in order to play any of these cards, at the top left-hand corner here, it tells you the requirements, what you have to spend in order to put it into play. So for this wood carver, I have to spend two berries. Or some of the cards will also tell you the name of another card at the very top left-hand corner. And so in this example, the wood carver uh, has a, an alternative requirement of the storehouse. And so if I have a storehouse, which is this card, right, nice. <laughs> in my tableau, then I can actually play this card for free. I don't have to pay the berries. If I were to do that, then I would have to block off that spot on my storehouse that allows me to do that, because you can only do that once uh, per per card, I, I suppose. Yeah, basically you cannot retap that storehouse for another free card. Yes. I do want to mention, though, that your city has a maximum of 15 cards. You cannot go over that maximum. Some cards will state that they don't actually take up a space in your city, which is nice because that gives you the ability to play more cards. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, there's a limit of 15. You also have a hand limit of eight cards, yes. and that is really important to remember because there are some spots like the journey that gives you points depending on how many cards you discarded. This is only available in um, in autumn, the final which season. is the final season. Mm -hmm. And so if you were to discard five cards, and take this last spot here and get you five points. Yeah, it's also important to note, it's a hard eight. You cannot draw beyond eight and mm -hmm. discard down. Once you have eight, eight is what you have. That's right. And just really briefly, the other types of cards that you'll see are the ones that have this kind of like a knapsack. Uh, anytime you play a card like this, it's just an immediate benefit. Once you use the benefit, it's done. Mm -hmm. The cards with this purple kind of fan or flower uh, looking <laughs> symbol, these cards are gonna get you a certain number of points at the end of the game, depending on whatever it says. So for example, the wife wants to be if paired with a husband, will get you three points. Yep. There are also these uh, these blue symbols. They're called blue governance symbols, and these just get you an ongoing benefit. And there is a fifth symbol, which is the red destination symbol, which basically gives you either your own exclusive worker placement spot or an open spot where everybody can can use. Yeah, and it'll it'll denote it on the card if other people can use it or not. And it'll say underneath the title of the card, like the wife is a common critter and the Undertaker is a unique critter. And the difference is you can have as many of these as you want in your city, but you can only have one of each unique critter in your city. And that's about it. Once you've decided that you need to pass, then you collect all your workers and you move on to the next season. And so what you do in the next season depends on what season you're on. Mm -hmm. So the first time you do this, you're gonna move into spring. And so you take your first worker here and then you get to produce on all of the cards that have that production symbol. Right. The time that you do it after that, you move into summer and you take your next worker again, but you don't get to produce. No. But you do get to draw two cards from the meadow. Mm -hmm. And then the final time you do it, you gain your last two workers, you get to produce again, and then that'll be your final round. You finish out everything. Once you're done, then you pass for the rest of the game, and yeah. you're, you're done. So it's important to note, in this game, you can be in different seasons from your opponents. Yes, you can end the game at different times, basically. Mm -hmm. But that is pretty much the entire game. You then count up all the points that you, you have amassed through the actual victory points here, as well as all the points that you have on your cards, and whoever has the most points at that point wins. Mm -hmm. uh, like we were mentioning, we are playing with a couple of the new expansion cards, mm -hmm. and so the first thing we want to talk about are the new power cards. And so this is an expansion component that I believe was introduced in Belfair. One of the earlier expansions, yeah, Th this concept came out. Yes, and so the concept here is each player is given two of these power cards and they are different types of critters. Like we have honeybees, we have bats, cats, and these are all from the newest expansions. Of the two that you're given, you choose one. Mm -hmm. Those are sort of the faction that you now play as and the card will tell you what your, your asymmetric uh, abilities are. Yeah, it gives you kind of like a a unique player power that kind of changes the way the base game plays for you. Yes. 
And so for the newest expansion, um, I believe this is the one, these are the ones for New Leaf. Mm -hmm. We have the cats, they're bossy. <laughs> mm -hmm. They allow you to send a worker to any basic location, forest location, or red card already occupied by an opponent. Yep. And we're not going to discuss every single one of these. We're going to end up playing as one. Just so you know, we have cats, bats, who are archivists. They do stuff with cards. Honeybees, they're networkers. And <laughs> they let you uh, activate your production cards yeah, in they, they pollinate. interesting ways. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We have snails who are steady. <laughs> and so for the Mistwood expansion, we have the Stoats who are planners. Not sure if I pronounced that correctly. Spiders, butterflies, and pigs. And the pigs are adorable and they're master farmers. So these, the pigs, actually you begin the game with all the farm cards in a face-up stack in your area. Mm -hmm. So you have access to them. It's a little bit easier for you to build out those farm cards. Speaking of farm cards, the new expansion also comes with a total new deck set of, of, of set of eight of these. And these are meant to replace the previous farm cards in the base game. Yep. And so these are actually uh, quite interesting. Instead of the standard benefits that you get from the original ones, a lot of these give you an option between two things. So like, for example, this farm allows you to gain either one berry or one resin. This one's either one berry or to draw two cards. And so they are all different. Yeah, in the base game, all farms were only going to get you just one berry. Now you still have that option of the one berry, but it kind of varies it up just a little bit more. Yes, two of the cards give you the one berry. Mm -hmm. So the other ones are all uh, pretty unique. So we are going to be playing with this uh, set of farm cards in yeah. our playthrough. And it's important to note, you replace the cards from the previous one with these. Mm -hmm. The expansions also come with new forest locations. And so the only new one that we're going to be playing with, I believe, is this one. Yes. These other two are from the base game. Mm -hmm. We were given three of them, but the other two didn't make... Uh, as much of a difference in terms of what we already had out. So we decided to just play with this. Yep. Uh, we're also given these new event cards. And so we're going to be playing with two of them. Um, some of the other ones that you'll see are just having like nine constructions, having 10 cards in your city. Uh, and then a lot of them are just combinations of symbols that you need to have on your cards. So like I was mentioning, these are more generic. Uh, you don't need to have a specific card. You don't have to go through the deck looking for that one uh, queen or mm -hmm. whatever it is right so these might be a lot more accessible yep. and maybe even more fun to play with right yep. and the last bit of the new expansions that we are going to be incorporating are the legendary cards so we have legendary critters and legendary constructions that are new to the expansion these cards were introduced uh, in the mini legendary expansion pack mm -hmm. and that is also if you have the collector's edition of the base game it's Comes included it. in that yep. and so if you're not familiar with these the way that they work is each player is given one of each that we're going to keep in our secret little pile face down. And when I say one of each, I mean one legendary critter and one legendary construction yep. per person. They do not take up a space in our hand, but during the game, I can decide at any time to build either one of these. And as soon as I build it, at the top left-hand corner of the card tells you a specific type of card. So in this example for Stray Softpaw, I can build this card using a ranger that I have in my city. Mm -hmm. Or I can just build it using four berries. But if I choose to use the ranger, I must discard the ranger from my city, build this card into my city, and from now on, I can no longer build a ranger. Yes. That card is now off limits for the rest of the game. Yeah, so you must discard the card that's in the top left corner. Of... If you choose to build it that way. Exactly. Uh, and these cards are typically powerful. That's mm -hmm. why they don't allow you to use... And they're usually... I want to say they're usually more evolved versions of the mm -hmm. cards you're getting rid of anyway. So... That's just how these work. And I don't know if you noted it, but the legendary cards do not take up one of your 15 cards in your city. It allows you to actually build another one. Yes, that's right. It gives you an additional uh, card spot. Mm -hmm. So they're nice that way. <laughs> and now before we begin our playthrough, we do want to mention that the main aspects of both of these expansions are not going to be featured in this playthrough because we they didn't send them as a part of the media kits. Yes. But we do want to mention what they are. So for New Leaf, there is a train station complete with tickets and uh, a bunch of other interesting uh, components that have to do with that train station. It's a sideboard that you actually connect to the main board. Mm -hmm. Now, we don't actually know how that is going to work in detail, but just know that that exists. And so we are going to be playing uh, with cards from that expansion, and we will we'll note when we use them. And the other thing is, in Mistwood, it actually comes with, uh, I believe, they're called the Nightweave mm -hmm. AI. Yep. And so that is one of the main kind of uh, appeals to that expansion is that in lower player counts, you can use this AI to substitute as another player around the, around the table. Mm -hmm. So so a two-player game can play like a three-player game mm -hmm. just to kind of get you more variety. Yes. 
But you can find all that information and more, including information about the complete set on their actual Kickstarter. So go ahead and check the link below if you'd like to know more information. But otherwise, we are going to get a little bit cleaned up and then we're gonna get started with our playthrough. Okay, so we have set up the board. We are ready to play. Monique has been determined to be star player. Yes. Off camera. And uh, so she gets five cards. I get six cards to start. And let's talk about our special little factions. Yes, our powers, powers by yes. the way. And so I'm going to be the bats. The and bats. this is a power that comes with the New Leaf expansion. New Leaf? Okay. So bats are archivists. It says whenever I play a card, I can take a card from the meadow and place it in my own face down stack by my city. And so I can play any of the cards from that stack as if they were a meadow card. Nice. So I'm going to be basically hoarding with the cards that I want. <laughs> very, very good. Okay, I am the bossy cats. Ooh. So uh, what I can do is I can send my workers to occupied areas or spaces that have other people's uh, workers there. Meaning I cannot go to something that is occupied by myself. I can't copycat myself, mm -hmm. but I can do other opponents. Uh, we also have our legendary cards, which are secret. Yes. Uh, we can. So we have one legendary, uh, one legendary construction, and one legendary critter. So uh, we're gonna try to fulfill those, and if we are able yeah. to, we'll we'll point them out. Yeah. Now we don't have the expansion meeples, so uh, just try to imagine my turtles as bats. <laughs> Turtle <laughs> you bats. Can. Uh, we also want to mention that we are using one of the new forest locations, and it's just this one: two twigs and one resin. Uh, the other two are from the base game. Mm -hmm. We are also using two of the new events. And so the two events that we're using are the magic show, which only requires us to have four of these types of symbols in our city. So it's going to be two of the red and two of the purple. Mm -hmm. And um, when you acquire it, it says you can discard one card for each of the red symbol that's in your city and you gain one point token for each of the cards that you discard. Right. The second one is Juniper Jig. And this just requires you to have nine critters. That's it. Nine critters Nine in your critters. city, and it'll get you five points because you held a dance contest. <laughs> Break dance contest, huh? And lastly, we included some of the new expansion cards uh, in the meadow, as well as in a, a large portion of the deck. And so we're going to be explaining them as we play. But just so you know, the main thing about the New Leaf expansion uh, in particular is that the cards... The requirements for building these cards are now very uh, general. Mm -hmm. So if I want to build a chipsmith, I can spend two berries, or I just have to have any uh, card that has the red, I believe they're called red destination. Yeah, I can never remember that one, symbols. but yes, <laughs> the one with the red bear paw. Yes, in my tableau. The expansion is going to come with new tokens uh, of these type, except they're larger and they're called, I believe they're called golden leaf. Golden leaf tokens. Occupied tokens. Uh -huh. And so at the start of the game, each player is only going to have three of these. That is a hard limit. You're only going to be able to use three of those specific tokens for the entire game. Yep. Now you can still build these cards using these resources, but if you were to do the top left uh, special effect to build them for free, you can only do those up to three times. Yep. So in this game, we are gonna use three of the basic uh, tokens to represent <laughs> our gold ones. We'll have them in our possession and we'll put them in an appropriate spot. Oh, here you go. Thank you. And so I believe that's pretty much everything. We're ready to begin. Are yep. you ready? Uh, yeah, I have to look at my cards. I don't even know what I have. Well, I am first player. Okay. So, uh, okay, I'm going to start by placing my worker out onto this uh, forest location. Okay, so, so, twig, resin, and berry. Yes. A little bit of everything. A little bit of everything minus the pebbles. And that is it for me. Goes back to you. Solid start. All right, I'm going to go to the <laughs> two of any resource. A lot ah, of these cards <laughs> require berries. So I will take two resources as berries. What a bossy cat. Yes. Mm. I haven't even enacted bossy cat. That's just a standard. <laughs> it's true. If you were there, that's bossy cat. That is true. All right. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and take this pebble while I, I still can. Oh, not. Because I don't really see another spot that gets me a pebble and any and in addition to other things, right? Yeah, there's no wild spot. resource area. So yeah. I really wanted this pebble. So here we go. All right, now it's back to you. All right, let's get a card in play. Okay. We're going to so play fine, fine. the Postal Pigeon. This cost me two berries, which I acquired in the last turn. Uh, and what this is, is a uh, Tan Traveler card. So that means I get to play it immediately and get the, the benefit immediately. And what it says is I get to reveal two cards and play one of them that's worth up to three uh, native points for free. I discard the other. Nice. So let's take a look. Oh, one was the Doctor, which is four. So that's just <gasps> You're out. discarding it's Doctor. Just, it's out. Yeah, so this discard goes here. And then because of that, I'm left with the ranger here, which is pretty good. Uh, the ranger is another active uh, thing. So it's move one of your deployed workers to a new location. Nice. That's good. So uh, let's do it. So this ranger is going to come here. And now I can go somewhere else and get a benefit. That's awesome. Yeah, that is awesome. But that's also two cards out of your 15 limit. 
That is. I'm going to try to get rid of this postal pigeon somehow. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> That's probably a way. Now I need to figure out what the heck do I need? You know what? I like this jack of all trades place. And since I'm a cat, <laughs> let's go here. Uh, I'll get one of each. One, two, and three. Again, this is because of my ability. I can do this. So I'm here with you, Money. Nice. All right. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> I'm uh, going to play a card as well. And I was kind of getting scared because I realized I didn't really plan to play a card. I just got resources. So I'm going to play Corn Evertail's Farm. And so that's going to require one twig, a resin, and a pebble. So let's do that. And this is a new, I believe it's a new card. I don't quite know which ex expansion it's from because it doesn't show either symbol. Yeah, it has a different symbol. Yeah, but this is a unique construction. And so immediately it lets me uh, gain one berry. And I can gain a berry for each farm in opponent's city. So Naveen doesn't have a farm yet, so I don't get that benefit. Uh, but if I did, then he gets to draw a card for each farm he has. So that might be a future production kind of thing to look forward to. It's a mutually beneficial thing. Mm -hmm. In addition, this is going to allow me to play any production card, but that would require me to spend a golden leaf, one of my three golden leaf tokens. Which so, are represented by these once again. Yes, for the these time being, gold. I'm going to go ahead and place that card there. Sure. But because I am the bats, I can take a card from the meadow and put it face down in my stack. So I think I'm going to take this general store. I'm just gonna place it face down in my stack here, which I'll put right here. This will be my face down stack. Okay. And that's it. So I'm replenishing the meadow here for you. Yes, thank you. We have a palace and a mine. Both are base game cards. So that's me, back to you. Corrin Evertail, by the way, if you're not familiar with this character, this is a person who founded Everdale. So we are in the midst of a legend. A legend. A legend's, well, farm. Farm. Their farm. <laughs> yes. Not so, him himself. No. Well, seeing as I have moved my worker mm -hmm. and reopened this any two resources, let's go right on back. <laughs> so I'll take that. Uh, I'm going to take a pebble and what else is looking good here, Monique? I mean, there are only three uh, options there. Uh, yeah. So t twig, resin, or berry. What let's is do, calling? Let's do berry. Name? Let's do berry. You wanted the berry because they're just so squishy, right? They're so squishy. <laughs> yeah. All right, so back That's to me. me. Yeah. Okay, so I am going to I'm going to play a card, and I'm going to play this Wanderer. So it's going to cost me two berries, which are my last resources. Ah, run away. Mm. And so the Wanderer lets me. It's a Tan Traveler, and so this does not take up a space in my city. So I'm just going to put it off to the side. It says it in small italics here. Yes, but this lets yeah. me draw three cards. So I'm going to draw. And it's worth a point three. at the end of the game. It is, and it doesn't take up a space in my city. Obviously, that is a. The thing that I'm most excited about. Respect, respect. And uh, because I played a card, my bats let me take another card from the meadow. You know, I'm just going to take this now. <laughs> the fool? Let's get the fool out. This is a notorious card. You're going to use it against me? Maybe. But more importantly, I didn't want you what does to it use say it again? against what, me. What's the... the fool, this is a base game card, and it says that you can play this fool into an empty space in an opponent's city. It's gonna. It technically takes up a spot in your city. Wow, and it's negative two. And it's negative two points. I know that some people house rule it so that you still get the minus two points, but it doesn't take up a spot in your city. Oh. We will cross that bridge when we get there. <laughs> if so. we get there. I just like the idea of it as a looming threat. Don't right? hurt you, huh? <laughs> okay. All right, so here are your cards. You have the monastery. And the queen. the queen, she has arrived. She's expensive. Okay, I think I'm going to build something from the meadow itself. Uh, I'm going to build this mine, which is worth two points, and it is a production, so I'll be able to do it right away. It costs a twig, a resin, and a pebble. Those all go out, and if you know what I get, I get that <laughs> pebble right on back. So I get like a little discount, if you think about it that way. Nice. Okay, and that is my turn. All right, so I'm gonna refill this for you. We have the Miner Mole. Yeah, that's a base game card. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I am out of workers and resources. So I believe I will just pass now. You're in spring. I'm going into spring. So I take my, my little worker and your back, other workers as back. well as my other two bats, right, by the way, not turtles. And I get to activate my one production card. So gain one berry. And then if I had uh, farms, then you would gain a berry per farm I have. But you don't. So I'm taking one <laughs> yeah. berry. That's it. So this is a very fortunate draw. I played the mine from the meadow. The minor mole is the little side one that I can play for free. You can do it? <laughs> yes, I'm going to do it. So I'm going to take the minor mole for free. Put it here. I have to put a little locking mechanism door right here. It's called an occupy token. <laughs> occupy token. I make up my own words sometimes in gaming. 
All right. So what does it do for you? Uh, well, it says I get to copy one production ah. in an opponent's city. So that means I get a berry. You get a berry. You get a berry. And I... you gain one berry for each farm in all opponent cities. I will. I would go ahead and say that this is a that, farm. It says farm, so I'm thinking yes. And I get to draw a farm for each. Or sorry, I get to draw a card <laughs> for each farm that, yes. that I have. I cannot draw a card because I have eight cards in my hand. So all right, here we go. We have a historian. Ooh. Okay. So I am now in spring. Mm -hmm. which means I can place my workers out. You did not recall your workers. No. Gosh. I'm, I'm trying to stay in winter as long as I can. Okay, I'm going to start my spring by going to this spot. So it's two twigs and one resin. Two twigs. Oh, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, so yeah, that is me. Cool. I just played a worker. All right, I am going to play the innkeeper. This one cost me one berry. And it's an ongoing effect. And basically it says, when playing a critter, you may discard this card from your city to decrease the cross by three berries to that new critter that you're going to play. So it's nice. basically swapping out. So it's basically you're upgrading a critter. Yeah, exactly. All right. Okay. That's me. Will you move on to the next season? <laughs> no. I need these spots. I'm staying in winter forever. Oh my gosh. All right, I'm going to take a mighty inefficient turn by placing my worker out here to okay. get the lone pebble. This is the only way to get a pebble yeah. right now. And I really, really wanted one, so. Okay, so I'm still not leaving. Oh, uh, I am going to get rid of said innkeeper. Okay. To get the queen. You're taking the queen? The queen. So this gets me a three discount on berries. Yes. So uh, I have one, two, three, four, five with that discount. So the queen comes to me. Wow. And so the queen, this is a red destination card. It's a base game card, but if you're not familiar with it, this is giving Naveen an, another uh, worker placement spot that lets him play a card worth up to three points for free. For free. This is not an open card, meaning I do not get to place my worker there. Right. But now Naveen has this nice little engine. Still in winter. Still, this is the <laughs> longest winter. Your people must be cold. Winter is coming. All right, so you have another, you have another minor mole. Mm. Okay, I am going to, uh, I'm going to play a card from my secret stack. Oh yeah, the fool? The... Are you fooling me? Thinking about it, but no. Okay. I'm going to play the general store. Oh, okay, so the general that. store requires me to have a resin and a pebble. Okay. That is what You've been building was, uh, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and place this in my, my so, area here. Yeah. And so this allows me to gain a berry. If I have a farm I, in my city, I gain an additional berry. Nice. So just two berries for me. And now I have a general store. That's good. So that's that, my that, turn. That worked. Okay, I'm going to stay in winter. We're going to build, this is a new leaf card. It's called the main road. And what it is, is it does not take up space in my city. It says this main road counts as an additional space in your city, and it may not be copied or removed. Okay. okay. That's a unique construction. It's a unique construction. So I'm going to pay uh, the pebble. The, the one pebble. Have. Yep. All right, and so it's basically a point, and then it'll allow me to play any common critter uh, one time. So I'm going to keep this kind of off the side yes. like that so that I can kind of remember But that. that is a golden leaf occupied token. All right, so back to me. Okay, I am going to play a card, and I'm going to play the teacher. So this is a base game card, requires two berries, and it's a common critter. It'll allow me to draw two cards, keep one, and I unfortunately have to give the other one to Naveen. Hey, I'll take it. So... It goes into my hand, right? <laughs> Uh, yes. Okay, and I have only three cards in my hand, so I'm allowed to accept this card. Hold on a second. Before I do, I get to take a meadow card. Okay. I'm going to take the hotel. Okay. This is a new leaf card. Sure. Placing it into my stack. And now I get to do the thing where I draw two cards, and I'm going to keep one and give you the other. Oh. I'll give you this one. Okay. So. Oh. Yep. That's me. Let's refill that. We have another monastery. Mm. All right, so back to you. Another monastery, you say? All right, let's get out of this yes. season, Monique. Oh my goodness. For you. Here you go, there's your third I, cat. I do get to produce though, so I gain a pebble. Okay. And then this one says I copy an opponent's uh, city, so I'm gonna copy your farm up there. And this one? So, yeah, so I get one berry, plus you have a farm and you're technically my opponent, so I get two berries. Oh Oops. gosh, I'm supposed to be able to draw a card, but I can't. You have eight? I need to free up my hand. Oh, that's perfect. It's not, it's not nice. Wow, that worked out. You know, I'm going to do it because I need to clear up some space in my hand. Yeah. I'm going to go to the Haven and I'm discarding four cards. So you get two resources of your choice. I'm taking two berries. Perfect. That's me. All right, back to you. Where would you like to begin? Uh, I know I wanted you to leave the season and now I didn't even take one of those. Yeah, spots. that means timing was good, right? 
I, I don't imagine. know. It, it probably means I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Realistically. This historian is kind of nice. It costs two berries. It says draw one card after you play a critter or construction. So basically anytime I play a, some sort of card out here, I get to draw a card. So let's do it. Okay, so two berries. I'm going to build from the meadow. The historian comes to me. And I'll just start from the bottom up. Okay. Okay, so it's going to be that. It's an ongoing benefit. So I don't think it counts as on itself, but that's it. This one comes up. Okay, we have a photographer, which Ooh. is a spider photographer. That lets you copy any of the flower, the purple, the purple production uh, symbols in an opponent's city. Yes. But you score based off of the details in your city. Do you have anything purple? I don't have any on? purple, no. Might be a nice one for later, for later times. Okay, I'm going to play these three berries to play the minor mole. So... This is a common critter, just like Naveen's, mm -hmm. and it's going to allow me to copy a production in an opponent's city. So I'm going to go ahead and produce on your mine. Mine, okay. Which is going to give me a much needed pebble. I don't have any more workers to utilize. And because I played a card, I get to take a card from the meadow, mm -hmm. which I think will be this palace. Yep. Just in case I have more unique constructions. So that's going to go into my stack. And let's go ahead and place oh, these out. another photographer. We have another photographer. And we have a gardener. So this is our <laughs> another expansion card that lets you activate two different production cards in your city. Mm. Okay, I think I'm going to go to this spot here. The two resources of my choice. It's your favorite spot. <laughs> it's a good it's spot. Open. It's open. It gives me opportunities. So I will take a resin and a pebble. Perfect. All right, back to me. I'm going to use the pebble that I uh, coerced from your card, mm. and I'm going to play Corrin Evertail's Path. So this is this is another wow. new card. There are, I believe, like three cards, at least that we received, that are part of the Corrin kind of pack, and one of them is the farm that I just played, and this is another one. Sure. So this is a unique construction. It does not take up a space in my city, which okay. is nice, because I can place it off here with Wanderer. Yeah. And it gives me my own uh, worker placement spot that says I can activate any location occupied by an opponent. So I've So you're like kind of mini cat. Yeah, but not for all of my workers, just for that one one spot. Yeah, I so, don't feel as special anymore. As yeah, that is that is true. So you could probably turn your card sideways that don't take up space in your city just so you don't. No, it's just up here. Lest you forget. <laughs> and right. it's also worth a point. Sure. So that's me. Oh, wait, I played a card. Yep. So I can take a card from the meadow. Let's take the gardener. The gardener, the gardener is so cute. Okay. Yeah. So that's gonna go into my my little meadow stack. So that's kind of a nice way for us to keep the meadow fresh. That, yeah, that is true. So we have a theater. Yeah. So this is the one that gives you one point for each unique critter in your city. Oh, interesting. Uh, well, I'm gonna use my queen then. Uh, the, so I'm gonna place a worker here. It says, uh, play a card worth up to three points for free. I'm gonna take that theater. Okay. So this one is three points. So it's gonna come into my possession here. So that's going to get you one point at the end of the game for each of your unique critters in your tableau. Yeah, so so far I have one, two, three unique critters. Nice. I'm trying to keep that train rolling. Wow, you have seven. You almost you have almost half your city um, allowance, I guess. Yeah. Well, let's refill this. <laughs> yeah, I know. We have another historian. Okay. okay. Who is a unique critter, so I cannot take that historian. Well, I was trying to wait for this moment, but I think this is probably as good a time as any to do okay. this, but I'm going to build my legendary construction. I have this, okay. I have Click Clacks. This is one of the new cards. And so this is going to replace my general store. So in order to build this, okay. I can discard my general store, but from now on, I can no longer build any more of these sure. in, my, in my city. Um, and so this is going to allow me to gain three berries plus one resource for each farm in my city. Which I was trying have. to wait to build more farms, but it just didn't work out. So I have one farm. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead bad. and discard this. Now I can no longer build general stores. I'm gonna place that in there and it's gonna get me three berries. So one, two, three, plus one resource because I have one farm. Yes. So, okay, I'm going to take a pebble as my additional resource. And uh, because I played a card, I also get to take a card from the meadow. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go with the chipsmith. Nice. Let's take this. This is a new leaf card that lets you activate two different uh, production symbols in your city. Yeah. And a new card comes out. So we have another peddler. Okay. All right. Uh, in my last turn, I, I played a card uh, that was either a construction or a critter. My historian allows me to draw a card uh, for doing that. So I just need to draw one. Oh, okay. I, I can't forget that. I keep forgetting that. Yes. Click clacks is so cute, by the way. It seems like it's a type of uh, a specific type. Of general store. It's not a general store then. It's a specific type of store. Specific type, Click yep. clacks. I <laughs> truly wonder what they sell. I don't know. 
All right, let's. I I'm not dealt in wood at all in this game, so let's go get three uh, twigs here. Okay. That's gonna be that. Just like that. Just like Twigs that. only. Twigs. Okay, I'm going to play a card from my secret stack, and it's going to be a new card from the New Leaf expansion. This mm -hmm. is a hotel. Nice. It's going to cost two twigs and a pebble. Yep. And in turn, it's going to allow me to build any tan traveler. But this is, because it's from the expansion, again, we have to use the technically the golden leaf occupied tokens, which we only have a, a max of three of. Right. So I may want to reserve that. But the hotel is a, uh, a red destination card. That says I can play a critter or construction from my hand for three fewer resources. It is a spot that I have to place a worker, and it's considered open, so Naveen can go here as well. But I believe that if Naveen goes here, I get a point. You get more than one point in a tiny little number in there. There's ah, two points there. Two points. So if I go there, it's two points to you. Keep so I have to make it in mind. very worthwhile for me to do that. But what is the, the benefit? Three fewer resources, you say? That is excellent. Okay, I'm now going to take a card from here. So I'm just going to take this museum sure. into my secret stash. Come on, reveal something juicy. A library. A library. It's the first that we've seen of this. Yeah. And this is one point for each um, for each color in your city, for each card color in your city. So I guess that maxes out at five in addition to the three. It's not bad. It, it does. You have one in your hand, don't you? It's hilarious because I was going to play my library <laughs> that's in my hand. And it's so. unique. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to play it from my hand. Uh, so it's the, the whole reason why I took a bunch of twigs was because I had this already going. Uh, two twigs, okay. uh, a resin, and a pebble. So that's silly that that showed up. Gosh, that um, is not bad. So uh, I get one. This is an end game scoring. It's worth three points. And I get one point for each card color in my city. And yes. I have exactly every single type. I have one, two, three, four, five, all five types. Wow. So that's going to be an eight point card. Plus it opens up this little thing right here. That's so awesome. That's uh, that's that for me. That is awesome. Oh, okay. wait. Yes. The historian. Every time I play a card into my tableau, I get to draw a card. I cannot oh, yes. forget that. Don't forget that. I know. I keep doing it. Okay. I'm going to play another card from my stash and it's going to be the cute gardener. It's just called the gardener, okay. but I think they're cute. <laughs> they look like a thumb. <laughs> um, and so this cost me three, three berries. Uh -huh. And uh, it's going. It's a tan traveler, so it immediately gets lets me activate two different of uh, production cards in my city. Okay. So let's see. I definitely want to activate my click clacks. So that's going to gain me three berries yeah. plus a resource, uh, one resource because I have one farm. Let's make it a resin. It's been a while okay. since we've had a resin. Sure. So instead of the resin, then I'm going to take a fourth uh, berry. Okay. And. Then I'm going to activate this card, which is, lets me copy a production from you. Okay. You so I'm going to take a pebble. pebble. Yeah. Yes, these are so hard to get. I'm just going to I'm going to store them. And because I played a card, I get to steal another one from the meadow. So I'm wondering, can can you copy my copy an opponent, and then you go back to to yourself and just ping pong it? But that's silly, because then I would just have chosen. Well, one I'm one saying, of my can, cards. can you just re-choose then the card that you have already chosen? Like you copy, like you took that one, yeah. then you copy me to then copy yours that you like the most. You know. Let us know. Yeah, no I, idea. I, I feel like that would be too strong. So we're going to say no. I could be wrong. And if I'm wrong, then this is not, then I'm doing this not to my if benefit. If you're wrong, we'll give you two points more at the end. Of the <laughs> wow. Yeah. So generous. Okay. <laughs> All right. So then I get to take one of these. Sure. And. Well, if you're looking at this library and you don't have any blue in your city, that historian could then work towards the blue in the I'm city. I'm gonna take a photographer. Don't listen to me. <laughs> that refills with an air balloon. This is a new card. It is a tan traveler. It says you can copy any card in an opponent's city, activate it based on your city, but it cannot copy the fool, main road, ruins, or legendary. So that's, that's an air balloon. I don't know how this is possible, but I'm gonna move into the next season. Oh, you are? I, I'm surprised. I thought for how long I was in winter, but uh, hey. So you're going into summer. I'm going into summer. So let's All recall. Right. Well, here is your your fourth then, uh, cat. <laughs> so we do not do production here, but I do get to draw two cards. From the meadow. From the meadow. One, yes. two, three, four, five. Okay. All right. <laughs> I'll take a peddler. That's one. Okay. And then I will take this photographer, which is two. Ah, okay. Yes. Perfect. All right. We have a wood carver. Okay. That is a base game uh, card, as well as another queen. Okay, so I'm going to play another secret stash card, and it is the photographer that uh, we were just discussing. I don't like it. Why? Because you're going to siphon off of my hard work here. <laughs> this is not... It's less base points. Yeah. So 
but you're gonna do quite well, I think, with it. Uh, we'll see. Okay. So it does cost me four berries. Sure. So here we go. And this is a new leaf card, but yeah. uh, yeah. yes, I get to copy that from your city, but I score based off of my city. Right. Which means I don't have a, let me see. I have one, two, three, four. I'm missing one color. You're missing the blue. I'm missing a blue. If I can get a blue, then I'll be able to get uh, Well, I already have points. this historian here, so there's no way I can get that. There's your, there's your blue. Fantastic. All right, because <laughs> I played a card, I get to take a card yes. from the meadow. You can take a historian. And no. All right, I'm going to take the air balloon. Okay. That's going in my stash, mm. and now we have ruins. Ruins. Okay, so that's a base game card. So the ruins uh, doesn't give you any points. It lets yeah. you discard a construction from your city and you gain resources equal to that cost plus two additional cards. It doesn't have any requirements. You kind of pay, play it for free. Yeah. But now it, it takes up a space it does something, in your yeah. tableau. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to do it. So this is going to represent my uh, golden leaf and Ooh. I'm going to cover my main road, which allows me to construct a common critter. So I'm going to take this wood carver here. It's going to be worth two points at the end of the game. And this one says you may pay up to three wood to gain one point each. Okay. So I'll take that, place it here. So that's my two, four, six, seven, eight, ninth card in my tableau. Oh my because gosh. Because one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have seven cards. So because of my historian, I get to draw one more card. And then now this one will flip up. There we go. Another, oh, another balloon. Air balloon. Air balloon. Oh, I should probably uh, do what it says. Uh, so I'm going <laughs> to pay the one wood to get a point. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. This is the first point of the, the game. First point of the game. First official point. So I'm going to take a, uh, a comboing sort of move. So um, I hope this makes sense. First things first is I'm going to use the effect of this bottom right hand corner. And this is going to allow me to just construct any tan traveler for free. So wow. I'm placing that there. Okay. And so I'm going to play this, uh, the hot air balloon. Oh as a, as a tan like traveler. So the thing that's nice about the hot air balloon is it does not take up a space in my city. So it's going to go up there and it lets me copy any card in an opponent's city and I activate it based off of my city. So I'm going to place this up here. Because I played a card, I'm going to take a card from the meadow and I'm going to take the other hot air balloon <laughs> into my stash. And I'm going to copy uh, the ranger. So the ranger says it can move one of my deployed workers to a new location. So I'm going to move this one. Wow. And I'm going to place it in my hotel. Uh -huh. So this lets me play a critter or construction from my hand for three fewer. Oh, it's from my hand. That is not, a, that is not, that's not what I was going for. <laughs> okay, I'm going to play the, the clock tower from my hand. And it is a unique construction. It's going to be for three fewer resources. So I only have to pay the pebble, which is the one that I have. Mm -hmm. And this is going to go into my... Tableau. It says when played, I get to place three uh, points there. At the beginning of preparing for a season, I can spend a point from there to activate one of the basic, um, the basic or the forest locations that I have a worker on. So if I were to go to the next season, I can discard one of these to reactivate this spot, for example. Very nice. So it's one, two, and three. So because I played a card, then I can take another card from the meadow, which I think I'll take the library because yeah, it's nice. it doesn't, I, it sounds like with the library, I can score that twice because of my photographer. And I believe that's it. Might have to build the photographer, Monique. So I'm going to go ahead and, and play. Oh, tea house. Okay. That's a new one. Look how cute that is. <laughs> so this is a new leaf card. It says you can give a card to an opponent to gain a resource and, and draw, draw a card. card. Yeah. And then we oh. have the cemetery. Oof. Which is, by the way, one of the, one of the cards need. needed for remembering the fallen. Yes. Okay, I think I'm going to go gather resources. I'll get the one twig, one resin, and one berry. Maybe it's time for me to change season. So I guess I will. Okay. So I'm going to discard one of these points to take the action of a forest location. So I'm going to go ahead and take this one. Two twigs and a resin. So, and that's because I it is a forest location where I have a worker from my clock tower. Okay. And then now I'm going to take back my workers and I get an additional one hiding back here. How many cards do you have? Here's here? my fourth one. Huh? So how much, how many cards do you have? Which is like the, the face down stack? This is my hand. Okay. My hand has two cards here. I'm going to place my secret stash next to the haven right sure. there. Okay. It doesn't seem like we're taking that action yeah, anytime soon. We'll remember that one. And now I can take two cards from, from the meadow. Mm -hmm. Let's go with the historian. Okay. And the tea house. Very Those nice. Two. Done? Yep. Okay. It's me. So we have the shopkeeper okay. and a bank. Okay, I'm going to go back to the queen. 
Okay. And so this one allows me to play a card worth up to three points for free. So I'm going to play one of my legendary cards. So I'm going to be playing this Dark Deep Prison. This Whoa. one costs a lot of things. It was two wood, two resin, two pebble. It's just way too much, but it's a three-point card. It's an immediate thing. It says, I can discard up to two critters from my city, gain three resources, and three points for each critter you discard. Wow. So once again, this does not count as a card in my city because it's a legendary card. I'll just keep it here for right now. I'm definitely going to get rid of the postal prison. Uh, prison, what am I saying? Pigeon. Okay. Okay, and then I'm going to get rid of the ranger right now all okay, right so that's gonna go out so that's gonna be six points and uh how and many resources six do you get? resources oh my gosh so what is this card this that sounds so i'm gonna wild. take two twigs it's one two i'm gonna take three four uh from there and then i will take two pebbles that sounds too good to be true five six let us know let us know <laughs> if legendary cards and queens we could not find that anywhere but it was a card with three points and uh, even though I have the Historian, I have eight cards in my hand, so I will not be drawing an extra card because of the hard limit. Okay, I am going to do something that I've been waiting to do for a long time. Okay. And it's, I'm going to play the Shopkeeper. I wasn't finding one until sure. now. So my uh, my Click Clacks lets <laughs> me play a Shopkeeper. And okay. this is just a regular Occupied token. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and take this one. And this is a... Um, one of those blue cards that gets you, it gets me one berry after I play a critter. It's a unique critter, by the way. Okay. So that's going to go into my city. Mm -hmm. Because I played a card, I could take a card from the meadow. Mm -hmm. Do I want to? I guess I probably <laughs> should, right? Let's just take the bank. Yeah. That is, that's that. So here we go. We have the school, which is a base game card, as well as the poet, which is a new expansion card. How cute. It's the butterfly. Mm -hmm. So the poet lets you draw all cards from the meadow of the same color. Then you get a point for each card that you drew. Oh my gosh. Whoa. But it's worth zero points innately, just okay. so you know. Okay, so I'm gonna play this one right here. This is a unique construction. This says uh, it's a castle. It requires a lot of my resources, pretty much all my resources. So it Ooh. requires two twigs, three resin, and three pebbles. And these are going to go here, here, here. Okay. Okay. And it's worth four points. And it says uh, one point for each common construction in your city. Ooh. Yeah. So that's that. And that's then, really nice. Uh, so now that I've played this card, the historian allows me to draw one more. So I had seven going to eight. Perfect. Yep. All right. So I'm going to one up my shopkeeper, which is the whole purpose of why I uh, acquired the shopkeeper in the first place was to play my legendary oh, critter. Nice. So my legendary critter is Terry Hare, <laughs> uh, okay. and uh, I have to discard my shopkeeper in order to play this, and now I can no longer have shopkeepers, even though it's a unique critter, so I wouldn't be able to do that anyway. Right. And so this this uh, critter lets me gain one resource after I play a critter, as opposed to just getting one berry, Okay. and I can draw two cards after I play a construction. No returns is what they say. <laughs> so I'm discarding the shopkeeper Very nice. and playing my Terry Hare. Cool. And let's take the poet. Okay. <laughs> I'm going with the poet. Poet. And that's me. So what we what do we have here? We have the museum. That is that unique construction from earlier. Do you have a museum? Uh, I do not have oh, a museum. Then it's probably me. <laughs> I'm going to play a shopkeeper. So I'm going to play this one out here. It's going to cost two berries. That's the same one that Monique just played okay. or had earlier. Uh, so from now on, when I play a critter, I will be able to gain a berry, not including itself. And so I have seven cards. Uh, my historian allows me to draw. I'm going to place my worker. It's been a while since I placed a worker. Okay. So I'm going to place one of my bats into my hotel. So I can play a critter or construction from my hand for three fewer resources. I'm going to play this courthouse, which is a unique construction for um, just one resin. Sure. Because it costs a twig, two pebbles in a resin. It costs so four things. You yeah, four things. Because you have a three the one. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and place this in here. Because I played a construction, my terry hair lets me draw two cards. Okay. So here we go. <laughs> right, that's me. Oh. Okay. You like it? The uh, I will say the new cards are very cute. Okay, I'm gonna go to the spot right here and pick up two pebbles. Okay. Oh, that is a nice spot. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna place my worker here in Corrin Evertail's path, which lets me activate any location occupied by an opponent. What's the name of that location? Queen. Okay, the queen is not an exception. <sighs> so that lets me play a a card worth up to three points for free. So it does not state from my hands. I'm going to do it from my secret stash meadow. Sure. And I'm going to go ahead and play... I'm going to play the bank. Okay. And so the bank allows me to place a point 
There, this is a new expansion card. Mm -hmm. And so this it's a unique construction. It's a production card. I can place a point token here and I can increase my hand limit size by one card for each uh, point token that's there. Right. So every time you activate that, you'll be able to put another coin on it. Mm -hmm. And because I played a card, I can take a card from the meadow. So let's go with the school. Sure. That's me. So, oops. Yeah, you get a storehouse. Ah, it's been a while. That's usually like one of the more common cards in the base game. <sighs> the storehouse is nice. Okay, I'm going to use my uh, golden leaf token to place right here. This one says any uh, blue symbol card. So I'm going to take this museum here, and it's going to come over there. It's worth two points. I don't have to pay these resources. Nice. And uh, that's my turn right there. All right, so here we go. We have a monk. This monk. is a base game uh, card. Okay. Okay. So I am going to play another one of my uh, my gold Occupy tokens. I'm going to play it to my bank because the bank allows me to build any uh, card that has the, the purple flower mm -hmm. for free. So I'm going to go ahead and place that there. And I'm going to build purple prosperity, by the way. Okay. I'm building a purple prosperity card. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to play the palace. Okay. Because it is a unique, it's a unique construction that it's going to get me one point for each unique construction in my city. So I'm playing the palace because it is a because it's a construction. I get to draw two cards from my my Terry Terry here over here. One two, and I also get to gain either a twig, a resin, or a pebble because I played a construction mm -hmm. via my courthouse. Let's go with the pebble because they are so hard to come by. <laughs> yeah. Like ridiculously hard. Sure. And because I played a card, I get to take something from the meadow. Let's take the monk. The monk, okay. So that's me, and this is your card. You get the diplomat. This is an expansion card. Right. It is a little ferret <laughs> or something. After you play a critter, you may give an opponent a card to gain a point and draw a card. So that's what that does. Oh, that's pretty nice. Okay. Uh, I am going to build the cemetery. Even though it's not worth any points, I'm going to take it. Uh, so it cost me two pebbles. Okay. And it's going to go over here. Now, this one, uh, it gives me my own unique spot. It's not open to other players, but mm -hmm. it says reveal four cards from the deck or discard pile and play one for free. Discard the others. So this one will go here. Uh, so my total is two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. This is my legendary card. So technically, it's not part of that. So same thing with Monique. She is also, I think, at 11. I'm at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten. Because okay. I have two legendary cards. Oh, you have two uh, legendary cards. So they both do not count. So I can I have space for five more. Yeah. That's really scary considering I'm not done with uh, with summer. I need so, to be more careful. This is a construction and uh, this and I have a hand of eight so I don't get any extra credit with my cards. <laughs> there we go. That's a lookout. No extra credit for you. Mm -mm. Okay, so for my next turn, I'm going to activate the palace benefit, which lets me play the queen for free. So this is a standard Occupy token. And I'm going to go ahead and take the queen from the meadow. Got it. Uh, this is a Dang. really nice card. Yeah. It's a unique critter. It's a base game card. It's the one that I've been playing. It's the one that Naveen has, yes. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and place it off to the side here. I don't know if that's kind of off screen. Just know that it is a queen. Because I played a critter, my terry hair lets me gain one resource. So I'm going to go ahead and take a twig. And I will take the ruins. Mm -hmm. I don't think I'll ever build it, but uh, this is this card requires it. So maybe I'll leave it as an option at least. Mm -hmm. Oh, we have a poet. They're back. They're back, as well as a husband. We husband. haven't seen the husband in a while. I don't think I've seen a wife. So, no. or a farm, really. All right, let's just do it. I'm going to go and complete this event here. So I have <gasps> no. two red. I have Sorry. two red and two purple. So that allows me to take this magic, what does it say, show? It's a magic show. You magic show. A magic show. And it says I may discard one card for each red type that I have uh, to gain one point for each one I discard. So taking this with me, it's going to be worth four points at the end of the game. And I get to discard two cards because I have two red cards showing. Uh, who am I going to discard? Let's get rid of... I was working on it. Yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> That's, That's why all... I played the queen. I Well, that once you did it, queen. I was like, okay, now's the time. Because I've had it. I have had the opportunity to get it with with these things. Yeah. One and two. So two go out. These okay. are going to go in there, and I get two points for that. So it's going to get you a total of three points. Well, no, it's worth four, though. It's worth four plus one point for each card oh, you discard. Oh, I see. The max I could discard is one, so two. So that was six. Six points. Oh, wow, you have so many points. You have uh, nine points. Yeah. How did you collect all of those? What was your secret? <laughs> Oh, Honestly, yeah, I don't even remember. <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and take this spot 
my queen spot. Okay. And it lets me play a card worth up to three points for free. So I'm going to play the library. Sure. This is the one that gives me one point for each uh, color in my city. Yeah, it's good. So this is a unique construction, which means I get to draw two cards. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, I can draw two cards because I have a, a hand limit of nine, nine now. Nine now, yep. Because of my, uh, my bang. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And because I also have a courthouse, I can gain a twig, resin, or pebble. Okay, uh, I'm going to go for a resin this time. Sure. It's been a while. It's been a while since I've collected resin. All fished? So, yes. All right. I am going to play the photographer, which would normally cost four berries, but I'm going to use my last golden leaf uh, to represent the any flower that I have. So that's going to be it. I'll just represent it here. <laughs> you uh, can put it on that card. I can put it on this card over yeah. here. So this is the one that allows me to copy any flower type um, at the end game. So uh, Monique has now finally unveiled that she has something going on. So let's put it So there. we are going to be even Steven on yes, that front. Yes, I, I needed that to happen. I don't like that. Uh, because I did play a uh, critter, uh, I get a berry. Okay. And because I played this card, I also get to draw a card. So come on, something good. Okay. Okay, I am going to use my final uh, golden, uh, golden leaf sure. occupied token as well. Same. And it's going to be... So that I can play this unique critter. It's another Corrin Evertail another one. card. Yes, I, I got them all. Yeah, you did. <laughs> this is a unique critter specific to the expansion, and it allows me to play it for free by using any of the red destination cards. So I'm going to go ahead and place this here. And so it allows me to give up to eight cards and or oh, resources one, to two, opponents. Three, four, and five, I get six. one uh, point for each gift. And this is a card that does not take up a space in my city. So it's gonna go up there. So I have six cards. You can give me up to two cards. I can actually give you as many cards. I just discard the rest according to the rule book. I'm sorry, what? It says I have to choose. Okay, the verbiage in the rule book says I have to choose an opponent if a if I'm able to who has space in their hand. Mm -hmm. I give you as many as I can and then you discard the rest. Okay, so I'm gonna give you seven cards plus a, ooh, the pebble. So pebble and seven cards. So now. Well, I think I'm technically supposed to give them to, to you. Yeah. But uh, you could just choose. Sure. I don't mind. So here's, and I take eight points for that. And while you're looking through that, sure. um, Corrin Evertail is a critter, which means I can take a resource. Two cards. I'm going to take a pebble, actually. And then from with my courthouse, it allows me to take another res resource. I'm going to take a resin. I'll take a look out. That's it. And so we have a mayor. Wow. <laughs> that is really cute. You gain one point and a point for every five spaces you have filled in your city. Okay, so I'm going to be playing this bard, and I'm going to get it for free here. The theater uh, accepts the bard, and this is not a uh, an expansion situation here. So it's going to get locked <laughs> a in. A standard occupied standard, token. Yeah, so this is going to go there, and then let's... Man, i got to make some room here. Is this like... This critter goes into your... Oh, yeah. It's yep, a unique yep, critter. Okay. It's a unique critter. So I'm just going to put it here. And, because I, I want unique critters, according to one of my cards. Yes. Somewhere there. Okay, so that goes there. Hopefully this is all on screen. So that's my 13th card, 3, 6, 9, 12, 13. And what its ability is, is I may dis discard up to five cards to gain one coin each. One, two, three, four, five. So oh the cards Monique just gave me. You're nullifying my points. I'm trying. Do you have a one? Let's get back do. a one. Yes. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Oh my gosh. Not good. <laughs> okay, because I played this critter here, I get one berry and... Because I have the historian, I draw a card. Nice. That's me. All right. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and play the school. So the school is a unique construction. Okay. It's going to get me a point for each common critter in my city, and it costs two twigs and two resin. Two so two I am running out of space, <laughs> which is not good. I should probably move on soon. I get to draw two cards mm -hmm. from my Terry here, and I gain a, I gain a resource. Oh, I think I... I think I accidentally took an additional resource instead of drawing the cards when I played this construction. So I'm just going to give this back, just in case I cheated sure. there. I get a resource because I played a construction. Sure. So I don't know if I did this correctly. I apologize uh -huh. for what I missed there. But I'm going to go ahead and take... Let's take a twig. All right, back to you. Okay. All right. I think I'm going to move into the next uh, season. So we're going into autumn. <laughs> One, two, three, four... Okay. Five, six. Now I get to activate all my green production. So uh, let's just start. Well, let's start here. I'll get one pebble. 
And then this says I may pay up to three wood to gain one point each. Do I want this wood? Uh, yeah, I'll get rid of the wood. Why not? So I'll get rid of the wood for one point. Okay. Okay. And then so that was. Oh no, this is not a thing. So I can do. I did this. I did this. I get to copy uh, a production in your city. What do you got? All right. I'm gonna copy this one here. I'm gonna copy your gain three berries. I don't have any farms in my city, so I don't get the extra resource. But I'll take three berries. That sounds nice yeah that is pretty nice yeah and then um i think that was all my green stuff so one two and three yep okay i should probably move on to the next season too mm -hmm. okay i'm gonna take i'm gonna use my uh, last worker here to go to the harvest festival sure you have to have four production cards one two three four yeah yeah okay okay so i'm gonna go here and it's gonna give me this uh this carnival tent it's worth three points. It's worth three points at the end of the game. Yeah, so that's me. Action to three points. Okay, well, since you did that, uh, I'm gonna go here and uh, three for for blues. How many blue do you have? One. Three. One, two, three. Yeah. So I'm gonna do it the same thing. So we're we're just both being spiteful here. We're so, spiteful people. Yes. Yeah, so three for today. Three. All right. Done. Yep. All right. I'm I'm moving on. Okay. Moving on to the next season. Next phase. Last yeah. season, we are now in autumn, together, so, here. Yep. And uh, I've recalled my workers, but now I actually get to do the production stuff. Mm -hmm. So I get one farm or one berry plus another. Do you have any farms yet? No farms ever came out, and All it's right. a problem which I will reveal at the very end of the game. Okay, it's a very big problem for me. So I grabbed a farm. Or sorry, I grabbed a berry, and uh, my click class gets me another three berries plus a fourth berry because I have a farm in my city. Uh, the teacher lets me draw two cards. I can keep one and give the other to Naveen. Yeah, that's what the teacher does. Do you have a historian? I do. Yeah. Okay, well, there you go. Okay. That's so another historian, one. Basically. And uh, my minor mole, actually, sorry, my bank lets me place a point there and I can increase my hand limit size by one for each that I have there. So now I can hold two more. And I get to copy a production card that's in your city. So you can discard up to three wood for uh... Well, if you have two wood, so you can get two points. You can take a pebble. Let's take a pebble. Sure. All right, that's me. Back to you. All right, I'm going to go to the cemetery. Now, this, this worker is going to get locked up going to the cemetery. It's this one here. It says, reveal four cards from the deck or discard pile and play one for free. Discard the others. So one, two, three, and four. Well, you know what? I, 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 okay, I can take this one. So this one is the Undertaker. Now this would normally cost two berries, but I get to play this one uh, because I have the Undertaker spot on my cemetery. Okay. So uh, this is gonna unlock that there. And then, wow, this is getting real tight. So this is gonna come over here. And what that did is it actually unlocked this space, which is the second spot on the cemetery. Ah. Okay, so because I played a unique critter or critter in general, I get to draw two cards for this museum, which I've been forgetting to do, but <laughs> it's okay. So it's one, two. Okay. Then I get one berry because I have played the shopkeeper and I get to draw another card because of this historian. Wow. Okay. That's some card comboing magic. Yeah. All right, ready? Mm-hmm. Okay, so I'm going to play. I'm going to play my my worker uh, into the hotel here, which lets me play a critter from my hand for three fewer resources. So I'm going to play this uh, the baker, and the baker is a a new expansion card sure. that lets me that gives me two points for each of my unused berries to a maximum of three at the end of the so game. So it'll be worth an extra three points if I can leave my berries in my supply. So two points for berries. Is that what it is? So six points. Six max. points. Wow, that's pretty so good. So I'm going to play this here. It is a critter, mm -hmm. which means. I can gain a resource. I'm going to do this right this time. I gain a resource and that's it because it's a it's a critter. So what do I want? I think I'll take a take a twig. Let's take a twig. Okay. I'm going to take the mare into my secret stash. And no, oh, we have a main road. This is a, a new expansion card. So the main road only costs one pebble and it, it counts as an additional space in your city. Yeah, it's the one that I have over here. Oh, you already took one. Yeah. So not only it, does it not take up a space in your city, it counts as an additional space. Oh, okay. So I have actually two more spaces then. Yes. So interesting. What are you looking at? <laughs> how, many, how many? How uh, many traveler do you have? Traveler. You have three travelers. I have four. All right. Then I'm going here to take this. Stolen. Yeah. The cartographer's the expedition. Cartographer. So I'm just gonna start stacking these. Call it what it is. Cartographer's expedition. <laughs> I'm Sorry. <just> kidding. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's me. All right. Okay, then I'm going to take the. I'm gonna have a juniper jig. Okay. So nine critters. 
I believe I, I played nine critters. Let's count. So the wanderer is one, two, three, four, uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it's just worth five points. It's worth five points. Better than my three, yeah. I, I, I held a dance contest. I had eight critters total. So I, I, I was looking at that for a while, but... Can the juniper it. jig. Yeah. Can get it. <laughs> Done? Yeah, back to you. Well, I'm going to go to this spot here. This is the five pointer. This uh, card, five cards. One, two, three, four, five, so four, good. five points, please. That's nice. Uh, I can give you. What do you need? Oh, a point. Just, Just one. one. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Well, I'm going to take the main road. Nice. Because so for one pebble, that is nice. I'm going to have an additional spot in my in my city. And so this is a unique construction because it's a construction. I get to draw two cards sure. and I get to gain either a twig, resin or pebble. Let's go with a resin. Okay. Because I played a card, I can technically take one from here. So I guess I'll take the poet. Okay. And let's put out some more cards. We have a wanderer and another wanderer. No farms. Where are these farms? Oh man, they never... They must be stacked somewhere. They never like came. Eight farms. Wow. Well, the Wanderer is interesting. It uh, It's basically a point, allows you to draw cards. And um, so let's do it. So I will take this one. So I'm going to take it. Cost me two berries. One, two. Um, it's going to activate right away. So this doesn't cost anything in my city. Mm -hmm. It's going to allow me to draw three cards. So let's do it. One, two, and three. Okay, so I drew three cards, and then now, um, because I played a critter, I get to draw two more cards. One, two. Uh, because it's a critter, I get one of these, and then because it's a critter, I get to draw another card. Oh my gosh. One. Yes. So, the gardener. You know, I'm going to do the same. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pay two berries yeah. to take the wanderer. He's nice. So that's going to get me three cards. Yeah. So one, two, three. It is a critter. So we're gonna do the we're gonna gain a resource again for that. Okay. I guess we'll go with a pebble since we went with resin last time. Let's go with the gardener. Sure. Okay. Done. Yep. So we have the oh farm. here we go. We have a farm. This is what <laughs> this comes in the Mistwood expansion. Uh yes, I believe so. And getting uh, taking this farm lets you take either a berry or a point. So that's nice. And this is the other farm <laughs> that gives you a berry. I bet we're gonna see a ton of farms here now. Here they come. All right. So I'll go here. And I'll get some resources. One, two. Two twigs and a resin. And a resin, yep. I'm going to go ahead and go here. Discard some, some cards. Discard some yeah. cards for points. So let's go one, two, three. Is that all your workers? Oh, no, I have workers. Four. Oh. Here's four cards for four points. Very three good. For four. Okay. All right. I'm going to take the farm that I've been looking for for so long. Uh, one and one. Wow, late game farm. I'm taking a farm. I gained a berry for doing it. Uh. Oh wait, okay, so you don't have enough resources for this one? Correct. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so I'm going to take a berry. Yep. And then now this, I'm just going to move all this stuff here. Our cities are this humongous. Are, pretty big, yeah. Right now. So I have one, two, three, uh, so I have 15, but I can play 16 total. So that's going to go there. Okay, so I, because I played a critter, I get one berry. Okay. And technically I'd be able to draw two cards and one card, but I'm at eight, so I can't. So now I'm done. All right. All right. What do we have it. here? A wife. The wife! She shows. It's been so long since we've seen you. Okay, so now I'm going to play um, a worker to the queen for the final time. And I'm going to play this poet. So the queen lets me play this poet for free. Uh, it lets me draw, the poet lets me draw all cards from the meadow of the same color. And then I gain a point for each card drawn. So I'm just going to place this over here. It's technically in my city, but I'm run, I've run out of space. So I'm going to draw all of the green production cards because there's four of them. One, two, three, four. They must go into my hand, which I have space for. Okay. And I get four points for that. So here's one, four points. Okay. And then I played, that was a critter. So I get a resource for playing it. And I think I'm just going to take a berry. I can technically take a card into my, okay, here. I'm taking this into my secret stash. And then I'm going to refill the meadow. So here's City Hall. Then we have the freight car that is a unique construction specific to New Leaf. We have the crane, another freight car, oops, and a teacher. All right, back to you. Well, I'm going to play this husband card for free because I have a farm. So this husband card will just, nice. uh, gosh, I'll just put it right here. So this is, uh, is that your final spot. That's 16 total cards. Yes. As I played that, I get another berry. 
and I can draw one card because of this whole situation here. So let's take that. I have one last space in my tableau. What am I gonna do? Okay, well, I'm going to play another worker here okay. to snag some points. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not bad. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm gonna play, I'm gonna discard three cards. So let's go with these three for three points. Now it is back to you. Okay. Back. We're at that end game rush. Okay, so I'm so glad that farm finally came out because Why? this legendary card that I had for the longest time, I'm gonna be able to play it. Oh wow, at the very end? Yes, yeah, so oh, had gosh. I had a wife, I would have been able to do this for free. So this costs four berries, which I have plenty of. So here's four berries going out. And this is the Mayberry family. This one is worth five points, plus an extra five points if paired with the husband and they can share a same space. So this is gonna be worth 10 points, this one card. Um, and so that's that. So it's gonna nice. go here and that maintains my 16 cards total that I have. Okay, so um, I am going to play a card from my secret meadow and it's going to be the Lookout, which is a unique construction. I don't think I have one in my city. No, I don't. I don't. remember that one, yeah. So it's gonna cost me a twig, a resin, and a pebble. And this is gonna be the final card that actually goes in my tableau because I have four, eight, 12, 16, 17, two of which are legendary uh, cards. So, so that's 15. 15 technically. Plus your main road gets you one more, so 16. Plus my main road gets me one more, exactly. So I can put this out and I'm just gonna place it up here as well. Nice. And uh, because it's a construction, I get to draw two cards and then I can gain either a twig, a resin, or a pebble. So I'm gonna gain a twig. Sure. Technically I can take a card from the meadow, but uh, I guess let's just do it, right? Let's just, just kind of see what's for out fun. there. Yeah. Just for fun. Oh, another wife. Another wife, okay. Right. Okay, well, I'm so glad because I wasted a I, I accidentally stuck in and did this. This is always gonna happen with that, that family. Oh, okay. So I'm just going to put this worker here and then get rid of two cards for, for two, two points. points. Yes, I thought you you were going to do that. So Nope, that's all yours. Why would I recognize I, I made that mistake? Well, with my final worker, I'm going to place it here for yep. the Grand Tour event. Because nice. I believe I have three red. Uh, uh, the Lookout, the Hotel, and the Queen. Yeah, definitely. So I'm going to take that. It goes back to you? Uh, I think it's passed now at this point. I, I have all my that? workers out. I have too, too many uh, buildings and, and critters, so that's it. Okay, because I have one more thing to do. Sure. So for my last turn, I'm going to play another air balloon because it's technically a common construction. Oh, wow. So it's three twigs, and it allows me to copy any card in my opponent's city. Come on. So I'm going to copy your bard. Okay. So that lets me discard oh, up to five cards wow. to gain a point each. So this is going to go up here, flying over, yes. over my city. And I'm just gonna discard any of these, oh, right? Gosh. Any five? One, two, three, four, five. That's brutal. And all my work. Hopefully that oh, oh, it's the last five. It is the last five points in here. No room for a third or fourth or fifth player. Wow. Yeah. Well. <laughs> okay. Okay. So that is it. Wow. We're done. That was Everdell. a long one, yeah. That was that was a really long. I mean, some of these cards in the expansion like really let you do a lot more stuff. A lot yeah. more stuff, yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay, so we are going okay. to go into final uh, end game scoring. Uh, keep in mind that we already scored the journey. Yes. I understand that some people scored at the end of the game, but we took those points already. Yeah. So let's just start uh, with the point tokens that you have in front of sure. you. I think okay. that's the easiest thing to do. Yeah. Okay, so I have 28. 22. Okay, oh, it's close. Yeah. Uh, next thing is let's score the base points just on our cards. Okay. Okay. Okay, I have a 46. Ooh, 39. Now we can do events. We'll okay. do the purple cards last. Okay, yeah. Okay? So I have these three. So I have the boat, the harvest festival for a total of six, plus five for my juniper jig. So that is 11 points. Okay, so I have uh, three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten. Nice. Yep. Okay. And finally, the purple cards. Yes. So let's grab those. Sure. Just to just only make the purple it cards. Easier. All right. You want to go yours first? Sure. Okay. So for my palace, I get one point for each unique construction in my city. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have seven. Seven. Okay. So it's seven for the palace. Let me write that down. Uh, two points for each of my unused uh, berries to a maximum of three. So I have. Three of them, so it's another six. That's for my baker. For my school, I get one point for each common critter. Six. So I have six uh, common critters, so there's another six points. My library, I get one point for each color in my city. I believe I have all five. So that's five points. 
And the last thing is I get to copy any oh, yeah. of the purple cards <laughs> in an opponent's city, but I score based off of mine. Yes, so... You see uh, what they are? Sure, yeah, let so me that, lay them all out. By the way, I actually had 10 points for unique constructions in my city because I didn't count the ones I'm holding my hand. Yep. Okay, so for that last card, I'm going to copy the library just for an additional 5 points. Extra 5 points, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so that's it for me. Okay, all right. I don't know. Let's see. So uh, let's do the castle. So it's one point for each common construction. And none of them in my hands are common constructions. So let's just put this on top there. Two. Two common constructions. Okay. All right. Then I have the library. So uh, one for each uh, color in my city. I have five. Okay. Okay. Theater, which is uh, one point for each unique critter. So I have one, two, six. Six? Yep. Six. All right. Okay. Then we have the, the Mayberry family. If paired with the husband, husband and with the farm, it's an extra five points. Sweet. How cute. Yeah. <laughs> How cute. This is a full family to go with a husband and wife. Okay. <laughs> and then I have the photographer, the one where I can copy you. So what exactly are your uh, oh. your cards? Common Critter. No, not that one. Unused sure. Berry, so it's six points. Okay. Unique Construction. Mm, unique Construction, no. I don't or the same thing, the one point for each color. Okay, we'll do the six points. I'm cool, so you're going to copy the baker? Yeah, six points right. for having these berries. And I believe that's everything. So I'm just going to do a little bit of math and I'll get back to you. Okay, so final scores were Monique with 117 and okay. Naveen with 95. 95. 117, wow. It was a lot of, uh, I don't know. Every single category you were outscoring me, so that was pretty good. I think it's a powerful expansion. <laughs> very powerful, <laughs> to show. Yeah. You can, I mean, we played with some of the expansion cards, not everything, plus base game. Yeah. We didn't play with Belfair or with Pearl Brook, so... I can't imagine what a game of everything looks like. Like that I is don't know. that would probably be some sort of an epic, but it's interesting because you still maintain the maximum card limit. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's just that you have now more of these cards that don't go into your tableau that can like feed back and forth Do a lot of things. a lot more player interaction, I sure. feel. Yep. So hmm. <laughs> That was a doozy. That, that one was, man, that yeah. one went on for a while. That wow. one, yeah, this is kind of an intense game. That was beast. Um, now, again, this is uh, the purpose of this playthrough was to try to showcase as many of the expansion cards as we could, uh, keeping in mind that we didn't have the train station, so we don't even know how that mechanism works. Right. We didn't have the uh, the AI from the Mist, Mistwood, Mistwood expansion. expansion yeah. So we also don't are not quite sure how that works. That they have their own player board. That was yeah. We hope we can, we showcase that well. Um, I have no idea it? if we made mistakes in that game. Uh, yeah, yeah. There's quite a bit of combos that have gone. Yeah, it's it's a. Uh, what we had was basically Everdell with, with more cards, you know, so... Um... But it's also different. Like, we, we played with the expansion cards, and yeah. the biggest thing, I think, the new, the new new thing, is the golden uh, occupied tokens. Yeah, yeah. So they are very tempting, because on all of the cards, you'll see, like, a, oh, you can play this card as long as you have any type of green production right. card in your tableau. Timing that is really important. But you have to spend one of those really, you know, highly coveted tokens. Yeah. So that I think that's going to add a really interesting um, dynamic in terms of your decision space. Mm -hmm. Also, considering the new event cards that are, are very much the same, kind of more vague, not looking for anything specific. Mm -hmm. So I think it might cause some more time to your game because people are going to be thinking about the combinations more yeah that, that's going to add some time uh because there's just that, that many more things that feed into each mm -hmm. other and you got to really assess the board and see what you're, you're capable of there's a lot of uh cards that are copying opponent and so you got to really like pay attention to what everybody else has because you know you're going to benefit from it yes uh, like that photographer at the end you know i wanted to see what you had going so i can score you know double and then you did the same thing to me mm -hmm. so all of that can just kind of add a little bit more time to your gameplay the, i like the core and evertail cards yeah, those are um, nice. they they are they're pretty powerful i think i also think that the new farms are cool i just it's really unfortunate that none of them came out, but if you can yeah. get them to come out earlier in the game, I think they're pretty useful. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, yeah, I think the expansion cards are, are they add an interesting twist to to the base game, especially. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, that is Everdell with some of the expansion content. This game is now currently on Kickstarter with the collector's edition, the, what is that called? They have the big box the option. The big box option, yeah, with yeah. everything in it. And typically so, we, you know, typically we do a review at the end, but mm -hmm. we didn't feel like we could give a full review without actually playing the expansion. Yeah. This is in no way, shape, or form the entire expansions of both. Right. This is just a taste of the cards. Mm -hmm. So. Yep. So there is a link down below if you'd like to check out the Kickstarter. Please go ahead and click it. Check it out. There's more information about everything else that we did not talk about in this game. 
uh, over there on that page. So thank you all so much for watching the video. We hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to see more videos like this in the future, please consider subscribing. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.